I think we can get started. Uh, um, welcome, everyone. I'm very, very happy to be uh, standing in front of you all, even though I'm, I'm also nervous, um, to talk today about the powers of personality and to present you a framework which is called the Myers-Briggs Type Indicator. And uh, we're going to do a quick tour of it. It's, uh, it's actually a very uh, deep model. Um, which you can take really a very long time to explore. So today we're just going to go on a quick exploration together, a quick tour, and we'll also be acting a little bit out of our gut feeling. Um, so the, um, there's one thing which I really love about the MBTI. It's, uh, on one hand, it's about you, it's about us, about me being a unique person, but it's also me being unique in a way in a family of different characters so um, we will take a look at also the different families you know what type of characters can can we find what structures of personality uh, can we uh, can we see uh, emerge um, and how am I unique in that in, in this and the other thing also is that uh, it really recognizes lots of differences in people um, so the interesting part is, in a way, having a framework that helps you connect, uh, reach out to people, understand also maybe to which family they may belong and you know where you stand, and from there to develop. So it's basically the motto also of the, uh, of the conference, right? It's about being unique and having strengths we can build on. Um, I would like to start with the first little exercise. It's a workshop, so I'm trying to make it as interactive as possible. And um, I would like you to turn to your neighbor and you take either your block or I have some paper here if you need and some pens. But you, can, you can either take um, a whole sheet or you can it in, split it in two if you want. And I would like you <coughs> to share for a few minutes with each other about one key experience when you think very spontaneously about one experience you've had in your life where you were active in this experience and you felt you were really at your best, you really managed that thing, whatever it was, really nicely. So please share with each other about one experience like that. So now after sharing your experiences, put on paper the main characteristics that you see that emerged about yourself, your best characteristics from this experience. You know, like qualities, for instance. Could be like energetic, passionate, focused, detail-oriented, you know, whatever you think is really describing you best in a few words. Again, we are going for a lot of simplicity now. And then you write this down and um, you put them on the piece of paper. And to close that exercise, I would like to invite you to put these words that you find were your main own characteristics on your chest. Um, I have some um, some tape if you want to put that on your chest and um, we'll take on that later on, okay? So you write a few words about yourself or you can draw, so you can use symbols, you can use drawing, you know, your creativity, of course. So what we're going to do next, I'm going to give you a little bit of background um, about the Myers-Briggs and what type of personality um, um, analysis it gives. And um, in the end, we'll do another exercise where you will be walking around. So I promise it's not going to be only um, you know, input and slides. 
I forgot, uh, by the way, to, to say my name, <laughs> I realize. Um, I'm Gael, and um, in my company, we do a lot of leadership and, and team development, uh, also coaching, and the Myers-Briggs type indicator is one of the tools that we use. We use other tools, uh, but this is one we use for um, to help people understand themselves be better, to un understand their team members better, but also to develop as leaders. And um, it's really, really an interesting, um, an interesting tool, and you will see why in a, in a minute. It's actually based on the research um, of uh, Carl Jung, who in the 20s uh, worked on uh, finding personality um, structures. And um, he realized that there were very important cognitive functions that uh, all of us are using, of course, to live. Um, one of them being living in a world full of information, so about how we process and take in information. And the other one is, we need to decide at every second of our life. So how do we make decision processes? So these were two main dimensions that he started to work with. Um, that's basically the start of the Myers-Briggs type indicator. Um, taking a look at how people are different in the way they process information and the way they make decisions. There are two other dimensions uh, that were explored further. One is about how we get our energy, where we get our energy from and where we direct our energy. Not all of us have the same ways to get energized or to put our energy somewhere. And the other one is how much structure we need in our life and how we lead uh, in a way our lives. And again, we are very different here. So. This was the beginning of, uh, of the model, of researching the model. And um, after Carl Jung, there were two ladies in the US who were really interested in that research and started to develop it really as a model based on a questionnaire. And that was the beginning of the Myers-Briggs type indicator. And Myers uh, and Briggs are the name of this mother and daughter in the States who developed the tool further. So that's why now it's called um, Myers-Briggs type indicator as a short form, the MBTI. It's been since uh, very, very, very much developed. There's lots of research into it. There have been many, many versions of the questionnaire. It's a very, very valid questionnaire that it will take. So usually what you do, you take on the questionnaire and then uh, with a certified coach, you will go through a self-positioning process, dimension per dimension, and then you will find your type. So it's also a very interesting process because it's not only you take a test and that tells you who you are, but you, on one hand, you do an online questionnaire and that gives you some indication. On the other hand, you also go with a coach through questions to really find out who you are. So a little bit like what we just did really, very, very, very shortly today, um, but of course in a more thorough way. And that um, is really interesting because it is a model that is really based on strength. So it's not about, that's why we don't use the word test because test would mean it's good or bad or you fail. So it's not a test and it's not about, there's no good type, there's no bad type, there's no wrong or right. Um, it's all very different personality types. And the idea behind also, which is really important, it's one of the um, personality instruments that tell you that your type will not change over the course of your life. I know that some people struggle a little bit with this idea because of course, we want to see ourselves in development, and we are in development. But the idea behind is to say we were born with some characteristics of personality. And this is what is not changing. It's like the color of your eyes. Um, it's like sometimes we say about being right-handed or left-handed, right? So this is not going to change. This is the core. This is the essence. It's the strength and the flow I was born with. However, we will all develop over the course of our life in a way that we will explore through work, through friendships, through contacts, through different experiences in life. We will explore other types of personality and we will learn also to develop and to use other preferences. So it's a really interesting model because it helps us find our um, our core, basically, where we come from, in a way, where we come from. 
understand the path we've been moving to in the course of our life, where we are at the moment. Maybe also see what we want to develop more, to which areas, which potential we also want to develop. And at the same time, it gives us a wonderful overview of different types of personality and it helps us understand why some people are reacting the way they're reacting. So without, of course, knowing immediately this is someone who's like this or like this, we can start having a, a hint and then we can also start trying different strategies that will confirm or not confirm our hypothesis. So I'm going to also uh, show you afterwards the different types of personality. I want to, with this slide to go back to the idea that um, the MBTI is a de developmental uh, model um, that is also uh, really, really uh, useful to lose our fears. And basically when we look at neurosciences uh, today, what they say is human beings have been developing with their cortex with you know this part of the brain that wants to learn and explore and it's a seeking system we seek to explore the world and what we also see today is that when we're scared we fall back into another part of the brain which is smaller and which is absolutely incompatible with the seeking system so when we talk about leaving the comfort zone and, um, and going out and trying out new things, um, it's great when we feel we are strong to do that. And that's what a model like the Myers-Briggs is really helping us to. It's easier to jump once we've built the muscles and once we know we have the muscles for that. So that's um, uh, something that uh, is really interesting you know, when we look at this uh, type of personality model to link it with the idea of the growth mindset, how we can seek to learn and learn from our capacities and where, where we're also in the flow. The MBTI will show you, um, the MBTI will show you where, in, where you are in your own flow, where you have your best energy. So that's also very important. And I really like this, uh, this, this sentence from uh, Jak, um, Panksepp, who's a neuroscientist, who says, when the seeking systems are not active, human aspirations will remain um, frozen in an endless winter of discontent. So basically, when we do not feed that learning brain of us, then we're not happy. It's like being in, a, in an um, eternal winter. So it's very, very important to, in a way, um, feed that other part and, and let it flourish. And um, when we talk about strengths, and uh, we, we work a lot with you know, um, strengths-building uh, approaches, such as, for example, also the appreciative inquiry, what we want to see is um, reality. We want to focus on um, not only what we could do better, it's important to know, it's important to see, we have green dots, there are also some red dots. And usually when we talk about development, we focus very much only on what we could do better. So we call that focusing on the, on the red dots. Um, it's good to see them. However, if we focus too much on the red dots, then we start activating the, um, the fear system. We start to be scared because then suddenly these weaknesses, they become so big and we feel we will never be able to overcome there. So it's good to know about our strengths. Um, in moments, we're also looking at you know, what we could improve because then um, we see this is a potential we can draw upon. And instead of making the red dot very big, you know, why not make the green dots very big? And with that, we can change so much. And I really like this, uh, this quote from uh, Einstein. Um, it's really showing the, the importance of understanding the uh, differences in personalities. Um, everybody's a genius and everybody has this huge potential in them. But if you judge a fish by its ability to climb a tree, it will live its whole life believing that it's stupid, right? So it's very important also to understand that some people um, who are different from, from me, once I understand 
why they need different types of information or why they use a different process for making a decision. Um, it's only then when I understand that that I can judge, is that an appropriate decision or is that the right piece of information? If I judge from my personality, then it's not going to be working. Then we are not going to talk you know, on the same level with each other. And that's why I really believe that the MBTI is a great model also you know, to build bridges uh, between people, to really understand them better. Now, before we start moving around the room, um, I just want to show you the concept of preference when we talk about personality preferences and we use these dimensions. I'm going to ask you to fold your arms once, okay? So, okay. And so now you unfold them and you fold them the other way around. How does that feel the second time? Weird. Weird. Okay, strange. Okay, is it comfortable? Okay, could that become comfortable? Yes. What would you need for that? Practice. Okay, all right. Okay. So, and that's exactly what the concept of preference is. Basically, you were born with one preference how you fold your arms. And that feels very natural, it's easy, it's your flow. Um, going out of your preference, it's like trying to fold the arms the other way around. It's very difficult, I need some practice. And um, that's something that you will practice over the course of your life. And that's what we mean with, you know, starting to move out of your preference. You know where you are, you know where you come from, and you start moving out and you start practicing. And sometimes you become so good at it that it becomes like a second nature, right? So you really, really can move um, along that, um, that scale really easily. Right. So now I'm showing you the four dimensions again. The first one is called um, extraversion and introversion, and it has a different meaning today. When we talk about extraversion, we think about people who love speaking in public, but originally the term was very much uh, linked to the energy. So. Basically, extraversion means that I take a lot of my energy from the outside world and I also love to put my energy in the outside world. And introversion means I recharge my batteries when I go into myself. And I also love to put energy into myself, into my thinking, my self-reflection. Right? So it doesn't mean that if you're an introvert, you cannot do public speaking. On the contrary, you can be a fantastic public speaker, really connecting very deeply with everyone, right? But it's a different type of energy. The second um, dimension is about or a cognitive process of uh, taking in information, and it's called sensing and intuition. And by sensing, we understand uh, that we take information with all our senses. It's everything that I see at the moment, in the present moment, that I feel, that I hear. So sensing means that being very specific, very concrete, very pragmatic, very much in the here and now. Intuition, it also has a different meaning today. Intuition means a little bit the gut feeling today. But in, for Carl Jung, intuition was a much deeper concept and it had a lot to do with a natural and very quick ability to create patterns, to put information pieces together and to make patterns out of them. So um, I don't know who was in the uh, storytelling workshop before with Caroline. Yes, remember when she showed Carrie in uh, Homeland? And then you can see Carrie, this character of Homeland, and she's standing in front of a huge wall and it's full of photos. And she's been putting lots of information together. That's exactly what intuition is about. And I remember Caroline said, she said, Carrie sees the things that others do not see. So that's the intuition part, right? So it's that capacity to make bridges and uh, between elements. And the third one is called uh, thinking and feeling and it's about how we make decisions and again we have to be uh, careful with the words because it doesn't mean that people who are thinkers do not feel and feelers uh, do not think both do 
of course, but it's about you know how much logic and uh, cause and effect process do we need when we make decisions. That would be thinking. You know, I take objective criteria and I want to have them in a very logical way. Or um, if I'm on a feeling side, I believe that it's very important to make decisions according to your own values, according also to the people who are at stake. So you basically you step in the process and um, you try really to make the best decision for everyone and um, that is also related to your values. And the last one of the dimensions has a lot to do with how much structure we need in our life or how little structure we need in our life. And it's called judging and perceiving. And when we um, talk about uh, judging, we mean a preference where people need to have a plan, they need to have lots of structures, they need to start on time. And when we talk about perceiving, today we would maybe say emerging. These are people who actually love to go with the flow and uh, don't, m don't mind if priorities change. And basically everything that emerges is maybe full of potential. Okay? So based on these four dimensions, and each dimension has two possibilities. Of course, uh, um, we have 16 types. Okay? And that's here a summary of the whole types. And um, again, it's a very, uh, it's a very um, short piece of information about all the types. Actually, each type has a very, very huge description. Uh, and um, what we're going to do now is that you have your uh, little pieces of paper. And um, in this room, <laughs> I tried to stick everywhere I could. <laughs> everywhere I found uh, some walls. Uh, I first put some posters about the eight big families of, um, of the MBTI, and I'm going to tell you that right now. And then I also put some posters about each of the types. Uh, and I will ask you to go around to take a look and uh, with a partner, with uh, one person or two people. It can be your neighbor or other people if you want. And intuitively, <laughs> this time with your guts, you know, find the type you feel most, uh, most attracted to and then we'll see, you know, if there's uh, um, something emerging here. So basically, the, the uh, eight core families uh, and each, each family, you know, has two possible types. You will have, you know, um, the, um, the conserver, the tradition uh, holder uh, types. Um, you will have the visionary um, types. Uh, people who have very, very strong inner vision. Um, the analysts, people who love to really work with facts and data, put them in a very logical manner. Um, you will have the conscientious uh, types and they're very much um, guided by their own principles and their values and that's a very inner process. And then you will have the activists, there are people who love to go um, out and do things and they're very action-oriented. And you will also have the explorer types and they're always interested by new things. Um, for those who were in the workshop uh, before about storytelling, we had a couple of stories where I thought, oh, these are really strong explorer types saying, oh, I was very curious and I wanted to learn so much. So I changed country and I changed job and I did this and this. Um, then you will have the director types and they are people who are very structured and very good at you know, putting the structures out there and uh, finding you know, a sense in, uh, in, in things and um, helping people also get um, clarity. And then you will have the nurture types and uh, nurture types are people who are very people oriented and um, they really see also their purpose to um, give to others and to connect. And uh, they're also based on, uh, uh, guided by their principles. So, but they really put very much that in the outside world. So these are the eight families, uh, in a way, um, of the MBTI. Now, um, so with your partner, or groups of three, if you want, just go around the room. You will find also in the, in the back room, uh, each time there's uh, one family, it's stuck, and then you have the two kids, in a way, <laughs> of the family. You know, Take a look at what we wrote before, and that's 
important because I believe some of the characteristics you might recognize in the characteristics that are on the posters. And you know, get in conversation with your partners and uh, find out you know who is who in a way. Okay, so I think ten minutes. Good. Okay, so um, just before uh, we stop, I would like to do one thing, <laughs> a very unique thing for each of you. When I clap my hand, I'm going to ask you to either say or do something expressing your energy now, okay? Ready? Start? Go! Woo! <laughs> okay, thank you.